in your medical assessment sheet for the NREMT, when it comes to your history taking, the history portion of that medical assessment sheet, we use sample and then followed by OPQRST. Well, if your patient is mentally altered or acting irrational or acting very unusual, but you're still kind of able to talk to your patient, or even if you can't talk to your patient, but your patient is just not acting right, we change out OPQRST for AEIOU tips. Now, your classroom might be different. In your classroom, they might require you to still go through your OPQRST and do AEIOU tips. And what AEIOU tips, what it does for you is that it helps you kind of figure out what's going down with the patient or what's going on with the patient without you having to actually directly talk to that patient. And I'm going to walk you through how you would use AEIOU tips in place of OPQRST or with OPQRST. So when you get to your AEIOU tips, so what you're going to be asking the proctor or asking yourself or looking for is first A, do I smell, do you smell any alcohol? So I would ask the proctor, okay, do I smell any alcohol? Do I see any containers, any, any beer bottles, any liquor bottles? No. All right. Substance abuse. Do I see any needles, any, I don't know, any, any glass pipes, any prescriptions that are empty that were just filled two days ago or last week? No. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to say he says no for everything. So you're going to keep on going down this list until you kind of hit what you're looking for until you actually get to what is causing your patient to act irrational or be mentally altered. Then you get to E, environmental. Is your patient in a really cold environment? Were they pulled out from a freezer? Were they stuck in a freezer for a few hours? Was it too hot? Maybe it's heat stroke, right? Also, epilepsy. Look for a bracelet. Patients um, sometimes will act irrational and combative after they just had a seizure. So that's why you want to look for this. Do they have a bracelet? Is anybody there that can tell me if the patient has epilepsy? Infection. Infection will cause somebody to act irrational if it gets in the bloodstream and gets all over. And also from the high temperature. For, so from the fever, the fever can actually cause the patient to act irrational and sometimes even hallucinate. So infection, the only way you can really see if this is going on is by, well, one, obviously asking if the patient has some kind of infection, if they were acting sick. Also, do you see any substantial tissue damage? You have people that live out in the streets and don't go to the doctor and they just let an infection grow and grow on their skin or on their body and it gets really nasty and it smells bad. So you can actually look for it or even smell it sometimes. Then O, overdose both of illegal drugs, so cocaine, methamphetamine, heroin, and legal drugs. Insulin is a good example. If they take too much insulin, or that glucose, this is a cell, that glucose will rush into all their cells, and it will leave little to no glucose outside in the bloodstream. So now the brain, so this is the brain, isn't able to take glucose and you no know, function adequately. So overdose of both illegal and legal drugs. Low oxygen. The only real way to know if your patient has low O2 set is by putting an O2 set on your patient. Check that. That might, that might actually be an issue. Also, if they were in a confined space when you got to them and they're comb combative for no reason at all, that could be an issue. Underdose. Are they taking medications to keep them normal? Because you know, normal is very subjective, so I put little quotes there. Are they usually on drugs or medication that kind of keep them within a certain lane? That um, you won't really know unless you ask somebody or if you find the medication and you happen to know what it's for. Uremia, blood in urine. Um, this could be caused by numerous issues, and the really the only way you would know is... If you ask them and they want to answer you, and also if you see urine on their clothing, on their trousers, on their pants, their dress, whatever they're wearing. Head trauma is really big. 
this one people will act very irrational after head trauma because their brain just got scattered right insulin and this kind of goes hand in hand with overdose so insulin did they take too much insulin and i already covered that so i'm not going to cover it again uh psychogenic do they have any kind of mental issues a history of mental issues poison a good one for this one would be carbon monoxide so carbon monoxide it displaces o2 in the bloodstream and now you're deprived of o2 so it does also go hand in hand with this one i just gave different scenarios for each one all right a stroke a, a stroke may act, may cause a patient to act irrational and it, i'm gonna make a video on the stroke scale uh, later on maybe today if not some other day but i will make one eventually so as you're going through your assessment you want to ask these questions or even talk to yourself through the assessment that way the proctor knows that what that what you're looking for that way they, they see you and they hear you say it so as you approach the patient or i mean after you're done you're about halfway done with your skill you're in your history taking you can take an OPQRST or you or you did take it, but they also want you to take this. Just ask, do I do I smell any alcohol? Do I see any containers? Uh, are there any needles nearby? Any kind of drug, illegal drugs, a, a glass pipe? Was my patient extricated out of a cold environment or out of a hot environment? Are they in heat stroke, right? Epilepsy. Do I see a bracelet that may indicate that my patient has epilepsy? Is there anybody that can tell me their, their medical history? Do I you know if they do have epilepsy? Infection, do I see any tissue damage, any kind any side of severe infection on my patient? Overdose. Um, just re-ask. Don't be scared to re-ask the questions. Just just making sure you, you could always reword it. Just making sure um there are no illegal drugs, right? Okay. Also, um are they diabetic? This could be maybe they, they overdosed on insulin or any other kind of medication. Is there any medication bottle around? Alright, so now I'm gonna check the O2 set on my patient. Put an O2 set on them. What's the O2 set? If it's below 94%, I'm thinking it might be O2 set, but keep on going. You never know. Underdose. Are they taking any medication uh, for any mental condition? If no, keep going. Um, all right, so uremia. How about, is there blood? Has there been blood in the urine? Do I see a blood stain on their pants or dress? No? All right, well, maybe, maybe it was a head injury. And if it is a head injury, you kind of go in a different direction now. Uh, so most likely, it won't be a head injury for NREMT. Just going to tell you that right now, but it might. You never know. If it's a head injury, okay, so what happened? Did you fall on your head? Did, did somebody hit this guy or girl with a baseball bat in the head? Overdose, again, uh, for, this, for, for insulin. So insulin, um, are they taking insulin? Are they diabetic? If they are, then okay, now I'm, gonna, I'm going to shift more towards insulin and just keep O2 in the back of my pocket. But still, give your patient O2. You should have, at this point, by the way, per NREMT, you should have given, given your patient O2 already uh psychogenic again any mental conditions you're just really hitting you're getting all your check marks that's all the nremt is for get your check marks when you get out in the field then you can mold your this around the way you want to do it and the way that it best fits your demographic and just the way you work uh poison was my patient found in a garage with a car that was on or with a generator that was on um, and then for stroke, you can do your Cincinnati scale or whatever. Uh, there's other stroke scales that they teach, so I'm not sure where you are. So depending on what they teach you, use that. Um, I hope this helped you guys out. This is for, for patients that are mentally altered, and it, it's a way of figuring out what's going on with your patient. See you guys next time. Bye.